All right, guys, we are going to run through. Um, I got this is going to take a good full hour. Um, if you haven't or if you can't already tell from my tweets and from other people putting stuff on there, or if you've gotten your ass handed to you, this is not a time to trade right now. The markets are um, they're at like one of those pivotal moments where they're either going to race to the moon or drop to the ground. And it's August. I mean, that's why Paul takes the entire month of August off. Uh, Ola, um, August is not a good month. It's uh, a month for traders to go on vacation and go do, go do things uh, and enjoy life. Um, I was watching the five o'clock open until now and I'm like, it's absolutely no volume, no nothing, you know, and it's, uh, you're just flipping a coin when you try to trade a market like that. So tonight, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off my video. I just wanted you all to see me. That um, I am going to, let's see here. We are going to run through. Okay, I got everybody on here. I'm going to run through how to set up. For the first thing is the normal disclosure that Paul puts on, on all the videos. Um, Screenshot that, read it. You can go through there. You can go to tradethefifth.com and it's at the bottom of the page. You can read it there too. Uh, in a nutshell, trading is a very risky thing to do. It is not, no guarantee and trade at your own risk. So you guys can do that. So we'll take that off there. We're going to put on trading view. And what I'm going to do tonight is, can everybody hear me okay? That uh, before I go rattling off here, because I'm not going to look back up. Okay, good. Hey, Jake, good to have you on here. But, uh, we, uh, I spent about an hour, I think, with Jake the other day. Uh, super nice. It was fun. Uh, so, okay. So, what we're going to do is this is going to be as if you basically just got trading view and you don't have anything going on. On your charts, so the very first, um, when you open up your chart, it's going to be blank like this. Uh, now, in the beginning, let's see here, it will be, in the beginning, it's actually going to have a white background like that. And some people like white, some people don't. I personally don't. It, uh, it's too much on my eyes to stare at the screen all day, so... You can change it to a light gray, dark gray, lighter gray, whatever, whatever fits your uh, fancy. I like black. Um, it's just easier on my eyes. I actually might lighten it up just a little bit right there. Um, but you, you just, all you do is just right click the chart, go down to settings and then under appearance and background. And then you can also like, I have my lines turned off, but you can turn on, uh, the grid if you want it. I don't like the grid on there. I leave them off. Um, that usually I have them the same color as the background and that way you can't see them at all. There's all kinds of stuff on here. Crosshair, you can change the color of it. Put a watermark. Uh, you can adjust how many bars over here when you open the chart up if it's uh, away. Um, there's lots of stuff you can do in there under that one. So, you're welcome, Jay. That so. All right. So you just opened up Trading View. Now I will tell you if you guys um, message me, let me let me paste this into the chat box. If you message me, I can get you a. If you don't already have Trading View, um, just so you guys know, it is a separate like front end platform for trading it is not a brokerage. You know, you can hook your TradeStation account to it and multiple other ones. Um, I, though I use uh, AMP Futures and Tradeavate is the other one that um, I've heard good reviews on. Now your TradeStation account will hook to it, but you're still gonna have the, um, you know, when it's a high volatility day where TradeStation locks up, it's still going to lock up because TradingView is only getting the data from your broker. Uh, so if the data locks up, 
you know what I mean? The platform can only do what it can do. I can tell you using AMP, I have never had one issue ever of it ever locking up on a high volatility day, ever. And I love that. Hey Gary, good to have you on here. So, um, hooking up your broker, if you log out here, you have all these brokers here that you can hook up. Iron Beam, they just came out with this today. Um, it's a new one. I've never heard anything about them. Um, of course, you have Forex, Alpaca, there's Trade Station, Awanda for trading um, Forex, whole nine yards. Uh, you can favorite them on here and then uh, log in with them. And, that, uh, and that is Paper Connect. Okay. So, you're connected, you're on here, you'll go to your profile. I'm gonna leave. Underneath your profile, uh, any videos that you shoot in here, I have several of these, um, I've got several pages of stuff on here. One cool thing too is, uh, for instance, I can shoot a private video. Now this is on the premium. I can shoot you a, uh, or a private video, send it to someone, I can lock it, and you can't see it on your end. If you go and look underneath my profile, it's only available to somebody that I share it with, um, which is kind of nice if I'm interacting with other traders that like John Garland and I trade a lot together. Him and I send tons of stuff back and forth. Um, it's locked where nobody can uh, see it uh, out in the domain, but it's easier where I don't have to call them up. I can, or try to explain what I'm seeing. I can just shoot a quick little three minute video, text it over and he can open it up on his phone and everything that is on my chart is on that video. So he can see exactly what it is. It's a pretty good deal, but I've got a few, um, a few videos that are in here and I'm going to post, let me post this one here. This first one is going to be, we're going to go over this here in a little bit, but this video here is how to set up your 9140 um, Fibonacci to measure the crown and a fourth wave pullback. And then the second one is a lot of the stuff that I'm going over tonight. Uh, I'm probably going to add some more stuff in tonight than what's in this last video that I just sent y'all. Um, just because I have learned more since the last time I shot that video. So let's see here. Come on. I'm going to close this out. All right, so let's go back to, let's go to the top. I'm gonna do chart, W5T layout. All right, so let's say you're going, the first thing you're gonna do is when you get this is all of these are going to be unchecked. And you are going to have, I think it's like five minutes and something else is the only thing that's on there. I think it's one day and five minutes. So when you first log in, all you're gonna see up here is five days and five minutes, I think is what it is. This is your time frame up here. And you'll just click down the drop down menu and whichever time frames you trade on often, I don't jack with one minute, so that's not gonna be on there. I look for entries with bits, um, you know, off a one hour channel. I'll drop down when I see an opportunity coming on for a precise entry. And so what you do is you just hit the favorite button next to whichever time frames you want. I don't do 10 minutes, 15 minutes I do, 30 minutes I do. I don't mess with 45, uh, 196 I do. I do one hour, two hour, four hour, eight hours and 24 in one day is the same thing, but supposedly the data is compiled off a dot D chart in a 24 hour one. I don't really see any difference between the two, but I just have it on there. Um, and one week and one month. And then you can do ranges in there, but I don't mess with those. So now 
up here, you can just quickly go between whichever time frames you have. So now you got your time frame set up. Let's look for indicators. If you're going to put, if you're going to say you're adding on the trade the fifth indicators, uh, or if you're just looking through here and you add uh, RSI. Um, now you see here, there's a little star next to any of these. You can click the star and then they will show up when you do a drop down, they will automatically be in here. Be easy to find. But invite only scripts are going to be the ones for like trade the fifth. Hey, Kathy, welcome. Um, we will just click each one of these once and they will add them to the chart. And I've also put a star next to them. If you didn't have it on there, I've got a star in there. So these are now on the chart. I can shrink this down because all I need is the bar count number on there. And we got the bias dots got on there. Now the one other thing that I do like to have is RSI. So and I already have that on there as a favorite. So we're going to add that on there. And then if you want to move something up or down, you just use these little arrows and you'll go all the way up. I like to keep my RSI up top and see what's going on. This little um, reset button will line your chart up. If you're back over here looking around at this, that, another, and you're like, man, I don't know where I'm at. Just click that little reset button and it'll bring you back to the beginning. Up over here, it's also really easy to turn on or off everything on here compared to other platforms. So if you just want a naked chart where you can just look at the candles only, see what's going on, and then add back on bits and pieces or everything, um, it's very, very easy to do. Um, now, once you have your chart set up the way that you want, what I'm going to have you do is go up here and click this button right here that says Indicator Templates pick up here on the line. It's just uh, looks like candles with a little uh, one, two, three belly wave thing above it. Um, now I already have in here the full W5T stuff on here, but I'm going to show you how to do this. Just click save indicator template. And then we're just going to put in here test template and click save. And then Click that indicator template box again. And then here is our new test template that we just put in here. And now you're gonna put a little star next to it. And let me take off these other ones just so you can see, so it's easier. Um, so I'll put a star next to it, click out of it. Now you click this box here, it'll open up the menu, click save layout. That is now gonna save that to the platform. Doesn't matter if you log in from another computer, Anything else, this is going to be on here now, and that test templates right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to new chart layout. So you have your original chart over right here, and then this is a new one. So say you have ES on this one, and now you're doing NASDAQ on this one. Now what you can do is instead of going in clicking indicators, going down here, invite only, clicking all of these, moving them around on the screen. Now all you gotta do is go up here, hover over, there's your test template. And click test template. Uh, Kathy, it should be on the, U on the YouTube Trade the Fifth website for last week. That uh, I know our website was down Saturday for a little bit. Uh, they did an update Friday night that it didn't like and uh, they had it back up and running within an hour or two, but um, that may be why that video is not on there. So now that exact same trade the fifth uh, or whichever workspace that you have, what you can add other indicators to it is now very, very easy to add to anything else. So I could do it again. I could say um, new chart layout. Now I'll say I'm going to do NASDAQ. I can just go up here, hit the T for test template. Boom. Everything's on there very, very, very quick. Then you can go over here. Make sure you save your layouts 
hit that drop down menu right next to it and then go down to rename and we will just say test template two save so we can close out of that one we can rename this one test template three save well log out of that one and then now if you click this your this is kind of like the start button for windows or your mac button click this hover over and then there's your templates that you have on here you click it and it'll switch over and it's going to look exactly the same because it's the same symbol but there you are so now got that and I put my, um, Ida, Kathy, I know you missed you on there. And I think um, you have to, Edith, you have to isolate off every time frame that you're on. There's no, unfortunately, there's not a platform out there that will auto isolate for you. Um, that nobody, I haven't been able, I mean, we haven't been able to figure it out. Um, and we have some really good programmers. It's just, the candle count changes depending on which time frame you're on, um, the whole nine yards. So yeah, you just have to isolate. Some people will do um, like this button right here on your select layout. Right now it's set on one pan, uh, pane. You can make it two. You can make it three. You can make it four. Um, it gets pretty, uh, overwhelming if you have all the indicators on four charts on one page. Um, it's too, too much for me. A lot of times, uh, like Paul, he will have bits and say stochastic on one and then oscillator and Elliott Way on another one or, you know, and split them up where it's the same symbol, but say this window here is here. Let's just do it right here. Let's say he just takes this off, leaves bits here and takes off this one and then he let's say he leaves elliott wave on this one but then takes off bits and takes off roller coaster so all he has on this one is elliott wave and this stuff down here and let's see let's i'm just gonna isolate for something just for the 26, 23, 426, 3, 426. Just for demo purposes is why I'm doing this. All right, so that way you don't have a bunch of stuff on your screen. Now, once you get what you have on there, you can click this little arrow right here and all of that stuff goes away. Now, if you did not want these new buy and sell buttons, um, they're really cool and I like them. But if you want to remove them, you just right click indicators or right click, um, let me do this again, right click settings and then go to trading, show buy sell buttons. And you can see them all turn on and off. Uh, I'm going to leave them on for now, but that's how you can take them off. Um, one other cool thing, let's move this to three. Um, this is a neat uh, feature I figured out today. If you say you're on a daily and then you have your chart on a 240 and then you have this one on an hour, sometimes it's confusing as hell of, uh, yes, that, uh, and um, this is actually kind of what I'm going to show you right now. So you have daily 240 and hourly. If you go back up to that pane box, come down here and click time, click out of there. And when you click on this arrow right here on daily is gonna take you to that same spot you can see on your 240 where it's at. So if I click on this arrow here, you can see the mouse moving around. So I can move it on a daily and see where it's at on the 240 and the hourly. 
pretty neat uh, and then automatically in the same way if I click over here actually 240 it's not going to move when I click on the lower time frame because the lower time frame is not going to move your daily chart but on the daily it is going to move it it's a pretty neat little deal right there and again another thing too is if you sync your symbol link right here this blue one that way when you click on say YM all three are going to change over again I'm going to click on there again you, the pane where you have one window multiple windows now not all of these are available if you don't have the premium version um, I know it says $59.95 a month you can get it for $2.99 a year and that's why I put my email address in the um, chat box and I'll put it in there again um, I can get you a discount on that if you guys get it through. I don't get anything from that. So that's just because I, we sell indicators on there. I just try to help people out on it. So, but that's how, and the same way with drawings, if you uncheck this, drawings on one chart are not gonna show up on another, but if you check that on there, they are. Um, same way with interval. If you want all of these to have the same, um, you know, five minutes on each one of them. I don't know why you'd want that on all of them. Well, I guess you could, uh, if you had bits on one, um, Elliott wave on another one or roller coaster on another one. I mean, that's just a possibility. Uh, you could click interval and all of these would be the same interval. So that is that one. Let's go back to just one window. And then over here, I'm crossing these off my list as I go through here. Whenever you go to uh, buy the indicators of Trade the Fifth, you don't actually buy them through TradingView. You go to our website, go to TradingView. It has, let's say you get roller coaster. Here's your options 54 monthly, 149 quarterly, yearly. Comes here, you can check out. Um, you will have to email Damien your username. And after you do that, you will get a little message over here um, that will pop up. I believe it's in this box of private chats. And it'll say, Trade the Fifth has uh, sent you a message or authorized your machine. And then they will show up underneath invite only. And these will be here. And like I said, you just add the, the star, just click that star next to them and it'll put it part of your favorites. Okay, so now if you're gonna add on um, contracts over here, um, obviously when you first start, it's only gonna have uh, like, let's just say create a new list and we're gonna go Wednesday test. Click save, and now there's no symbols in here. So, all right, we're gonna put ES. It's gonna come down. The first thing by default is stocks. So if I'm trading futures, I just go over here. There's the S&P 500. I click down. If I want the continuous contract current month, I click the first one. If I want continuous contract uh, front month two, or if you want the specific September, December, March, June, um, like that on there. So now you cannot place a trade on the continuous contract. So I like putting that on there and then clicking it again. And then you'll put the current contract. That way you can chart. I like charting on the continuous because then it doesn't disappear when the contract goes away. Uh, and then you can click over and make your trades off there on it. So let's go, let's say NQ. Click down, click the continuous in Q. Click the September contract, yada, yada, yada. You can just keep going down, RTY, um, YM, whatever you want that's on there. Um, and then when you click that, it will switch back and forth. You can get more screen space by closing that out. It'll open it up. Now you can also go down and scroll down. This is kind of a neat little um, deal here. It gives you um, 
the days range, let's go back up to ES so I can see where I'm at. It gives you the days range of where we're at. So it was all, right now we've only gone about a 10 point range. Um, 52 weeks, obviously we've done quite a bit different. Gives you one week performance, one month, three months, one year, year to date, six months. Um, and this more technical indicators, this is kind of a neat deal. A lot of people don't realize that's in there. It has like all these Fibonacci pivots. Uh, I don't even know what the hell the rest of these other things are. Um, but it's giving you an EMA, 20 day EMA, 10 uh, exponential, uh, simple. It gives you what's going on and you can click by five minutes. 15 minutes and it gives you what's the overall of the market. Uh, what's it like right now? So strong buy, strong buy on an hour, four hours, eh, still uh, buy, buy, strong buy. Uh, one week, strong, strong, one month. Uh, still, still pretty good. But uh, one hour is all strong buy. 15 minutes, start dropping down over here on the oscillators, five minutes, jumps back up. So overall, the looks like uh, up is the trend, which obviously it is. Um, kind of a neat deal. And then you can also um, click over here for news, headline news and stuff like that. That's out of there. I'm not going to dig into that because it doesn't matter tonight. So we're going to close uh, one thing. If you want to see the uh, candle info, this little button right here on the third one down, you click it, just hover over the candle and you can see the candle numbers right here. So I can hover over that big long red candle and I can see it opened at 33.62.25. It ran down to 33.19.50 and it ran up to 33.63.25. So a very big range. Um, 34.25 points in one, one hour candle. Um, and then there's, so th that's that if you wanted info on it and down here, if you wanted to, um, this gives you like overall what's going on. If you wanted to put an alarm on something, uh, I've been messing around with some um, alarms on Stochastics and RSI. One hit today that I set the other day and uh, surprised me, but you can set an alarm for, let's just say that you drew a horizontal line right here and you're like, when we hit this, add alert, you just right click the line, click alert. Uh, you can also go up here in this button right here. We'll create alert. You can put crossing only once, open-ended, whatever, hit create, and it's done. So now this line has an alert on it. It's right here. If we cross that line, it will send you a email, a alert message on your phone on the app, uh, and it'll ding if you have the uh, desktop uh, if you have the web version open up on your desktop, it'll beep telling, they, telling you that it's crossed, whatever, whatever it is that you set um, on it, which is pretty cool. You can set it on a trend line also, and that's what I've been messing around with with these RSI and um, stochastic one was um, crossing over. So, all right, so we've be, gone past that. There's a economic calendar in there that you can look at to see what's going on in the market. There are ideas that you can follow people and you can, uh, your own ideas, but you can, uh, you can talk to other people. You can um, have uh, personal conversations with people in there. There's uh, idea streams if you can favorite people like Trey the Fifth or myself. And when I post something, it'll pop up over in here where you can follow them. There are uh, notifications on here of when people like your stuff or whatever. Um, this button right here is your uh, trading. Uh, if you, it's not the dome, but you can trade from here. You can set your stop loss. You can hit your take profit. You can set your uh, quantity, whatever you're going to trade. Um, or you can just click the dome and 
you can, you know, if you want to set a uh, trade here to hit uh, for a long or here for a short down. Um, if you're playing a bounce, like say with gold in the morning or uh, something from that, um, you can set those in there to go. If you want to just clear them out, you can clear that the little buttons at the bottom and it takes it out. Pretty, pretty easy on that one. So let's turn that off there. One of the uh, things over here in this bottom corner that I really, really, really like is this object tree. And the object tree, if you, um, let's say, I'm just gonna draw some stuff on here randomly. So don't uh, be mad at me. Um, if you wanted to name, like say this trend line, you can hit settings text and you can put in here what is this uh, one hour trend line and now you know when you set it so if you drop down to 30 minutes you know that is a one hour trend line or if you're on 15 minutes um, squeeze back and you know it's a one hour trend line I like these because I'll put my daily trend line um, on there and I just know that's what it is. So you, don't, you have no doubt when you're looking for it. But if you'll notice over here in the object tree, when I drop this on, when you touch this line, it highlights this box over here. Well, this box, you can lock that trend line and you can also turn it on and off. But I'm gonna show you something kind of cool. Let's just say I had this trend line and I had another one over here and another one from here to here. And I'm like, man, I just want to be able to see, I just want to look at my chart real quick with a naked chart with nothing on it. You can actually group all of these together. So all you do is click on the first trend line. Uh, you can also uh, rename them. Uh, if you just double click, uh, it'll, you can change the name. And I can say test line one. And then I can click this one here. I can hit rename, test line two, and so forth, and go down. So I can just click one time on there, then hold your shift button down. And I'm gonna do the horizontal line and everything. Well, actually, let's just do the trend lines. So I just, let's do it again. I just click the first one, hold your shift button down, click the last one, and it highlights all of them. Then you go up here in this little folder button, click this folder, and it has now grouped all of these trend lines into one group. So I can right click and rename, and I can just put test trend lines. And now I can turn them all on or all off at one, one moment, which is super freaking nice when if you're like me and you get so much crap on your screen you can't see it uh you can turn them on and off uh it's very 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 handy same way with um uh, you know if you're over here and you're drawing a channel from here to here and now you want to turn your trend lines on and see where your trend lines you know, interact with the channel lines, um, but then you want just a clear, clear screen. And same way with the um, regression trend, you can right click and name it whatever you want. You can um, turn it on and off. Uh, very, very uh, easy to use. Um, so let's do, all right, we've covered that. And this is any of your indicators are also over here. So like I was saying on, well, I deleted some of those other indicators off. We'll leave them off for now. Let's go over here for, let me go back to the W5T layout that I had originally that has everything on it on one page. Okay, once you get, let me cross these off here, save my favorites, time frames. I'm trying to squeeze everything in, I can. 
Are you guys enjoying this, going through all these little things like this? Okay, good. Yeah, Kathy, you can uh, you can click off just one of the trend lines uh, if you want. For instance, let me just show you, I think it's test template three. Was it that one? Nope. Two. Nope, I don't think I saved. You know what? I didn't save that layout when I closed it out just a minute ago. So, um, but yes, you can, um, I'll just draw these real quick. Just say one there, one there, and one here. You can go over here and turn off two of them and leave on that one. Or you can turn off that one and turn on the other two. Uh, or if you group them, you can just turn them all on and all off. Super, super easy. I'd, um, this, um, I've helped quite a few people recently. Uh, yes, it does have chart trading, uh, Anna. If you, let's see here, do, 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 do. well, that's, um, let me see here. I don't use it. I I uh, go off of the dome or um, this trading thing here. This is I do this because I want to know where I'm getting in and out of. But you can if you let me see here. I believe you just right click and visual order. I think that I think that's how that works. You stumped me on that one. I got to give it to you. Um, I don't trade off of it. I know they have something on there now. They just added these buttons. So wherever you're at, um, you can just hit buy and it'll put it on there. And then it now doesn't have a protection on it right off the bat. So this is another lesson you can learn here. As soon as you place a trade, you can click the middle and it'll open up this box. Just click stop loss function here, say 12 ticks, hit modify, and what did I do? Hold on, I gotta save it first. And let's go back. There we go. Now, stop loss 12. Well, normally it puts it in there that uh, I think I, between Zoom running right now, it runs my computer. Let me just close this. Let's try this again. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, guys. That's uh, normally that works. Let's try entering it like this. Stop loss, 10, go. Maybe it's because I'm on pa paper trading. Normally it lets me put a stop loss on. But anyhow, I'm gonna go past uh, so we don't miss out on anything for the class. Hmm. So on the left hand side, before I go there, sometimes uh, the color of say Elliott wave or let me isolate, this looks like a one, one, two, three, that one probably stopped out, one, two, three, four, this is probably a fifth wave somewhere right in there. So I'm gonna isolate off this candle and that is 23510. Just click that sprocket. 23510. And all right, so let's turn off roller coaster so you can see. Let's turn off bits. And I changed these earlier. If you just hover over that, you can either right click when it does the little dots and put it on there, or you can go over here to Elliott Wave, hit the little sprocket, and 
you can go to style and then here's the background. Now I turned this down earlier. It's normally way up there on hundred percent. I moved it down. Now you don't want to get a black because you can't see it because it uh, backs in there, but you can make it very, very, very light. Then you can go for the yellow and that's, it's normally really, really bright. It's hard to see your candles through it sometimes. So you can move this down and same way with the red, you move it way down and same way with the six, four moving average. You can, now I don't want you don't want them too light uh, cause they're pretty important, but you can back them down so that they're not, you know what I mean? Like overpowering your screen. And then you can put this as save as default. So now you don't have to keep doing this every time you add it um, to this chart, it's gonna save it as these lighter colors. Now there's something else you can do too. You can right click the candles and hit settings. And you can go in here under symbol is bodies, click your green, and this is for your green candles going up. So you can actually lighten them. You can see them, you kind of make them translucent. Uh, you make them empty if you want, um, but kind of translucent. Then that way you can see your 6-4 moving average behind it or your purple point of control dots. Uh, same way with the red. You can run them back there, take them down. Um, that's almost empty. I want a little bit of color to them. And put those on there. The borders of them. Uh, same way, you can uh, make them darker. I will lighten them up just a little, little bit. I like to see the edges on the tops of them. Click your red, lighten them up a little bit more. And then your wicks, uh, you can lighten them if you want it. I like mine uh, super bright because I want to see where they're at. And... And then you can... Think. Once you save them, they're in there um, like that when you add them on. So now you can see your 6-4 moving average through those uh, candle bodies. And uh, it's just a lot easier to see. So let's add on bits. All right. Now bits is a lot easier to see now over whenever you're like in the middle of an Elliott wave or something else, you can see the uh, interaction of these pretty darn good. Now let's go over here. Now, once you change to bits, you go over here and click the sprocket. And this is one feature that I really like about TradingView is I can go over here and like, um, like say for instance, hover over this candle, go to the bottom of the screen and see that this is August 12th at 8.30. Without this box going away that will in other platforms, uh, if you click out of there, this box disappears. So I really like how that happens um, on there. So for instance, the purple point of control dots, which are these right here, if you wanted to make them lighter, or brighter, if you wanted to make them thicker, um, you could always make them thicker and then lighten them up. You can make them thinner and make them brighter. Um, I like them, I like them uh, bright where I can see them out of there. Um, your yellow line uh, going on, you can make it brighter. You can make, take them down where you can barely see it. Um, I like to keep that one kind of bright because that's the major line when it crosses. Same way with the cyan. I like to keep it bright when it crosses that line. I want to see it when it goes. Um, and maybe even, as I say, actually, I'm going to make it one, one stop uh, bigger than, than that one. And then same way with uh, stuff like yesterday's clothes. You can make those dots bigger or brighter or take them out. I lighten them up because I don't need to see them. Uh, I know they're there. Uh, but I've just got too much color on the screen and I want to keep them all down uh, so that I got a reference that they're there, but they're not overwhelmingly taken over like your screen. Uh, if you go down here, 
let's see your lines for the black box or excuse me um, bits you can turn them on and off if you don't want them on your screen at all uh, some people put them on there some people don't um, I like taking them off at times uh, if I've got a lot of drawings on my chart these get in the way um, from there so you can take them on and off if you want and then after you're done you can save as default and then click OK so now bits is lightened up roller coasters lightened up let's add on uh, excuse me Elliott wave and bits now let's add on roller coaster and I already lightened it up earlier and let's just go in here and if you here's the risk and you'll see how much brighter it wasn't that bright but it was pretty darn bright so I lightened it up down in there uh, where you know I still see it but it's not crazy this was like way up there at 100 I think so I lowered it down into this range um, same way with this one I can take it out I know that's what it means is to go long um, but that way I can still see the color of what's going on um, all of these lines same way if you see the top line you can see it go brighter and lower you can uh, if you make it where you want it same with this one which is the low got them in there there's, I mean, you could literally, it's, you could do whatever you want for it. But after you figure out what the what colors that you like, you just put save as default, click okay. And now the screen isn't as um, overwhelming where the colors are going over each other. It's not so bad. You can see your Elliott wave just fine. You can still see your candles. Um, let me go back into, I think it was bits. Yeah, there we go. Whenever you turn on bits, bits takes over your, uh, uh, Kathy, give me just a second. Uh, bits takes over the color of the candles instead of just red or green. It does the gray for low volume up, cyan for low volume down. So you have to go in here if you have bits on and lighten up your green candle, your red candles if you wanna lighten them up and gray if you want to lighten them up cyan for low volume uh, down you can lighten them up and you don't have to it's just um you know if you want to make that screen where it's not like screaming out at you uh like that then just click default save as default click okay and now they're out of there. And what I like is when it's like this, is you can see your point of control dots while the candle is going. You can also see your cyan line when it's crossing over. It makes it um, a whole lot easier. So let's go back to Elliott Wave so I can answer uh, Kathy's question. How do you reduce the color on the Elliott Wave? Okay, so you just click this little sprocket on Elliott Wave. This box comes up and plots background which is that green, which is the green right here. Let me turn off roller coaster uh, and bits and then click this again. So click the background and then you can drag this. Uh, I think it comes about like this. Um, it's just a little too bright for me. I like, I know what that is. So all I need to know is where the line is coming out of there. So I do it about 30 percent no 37 there it is um then just click on that same box click yellow you can adjust the brightness of that yellow so we'll just keep them both at 37 and then the red move it around make it brighter go to 37 38 36 um and then same way with the 6.4 moving average, you can actually make them brighter. I'm gonna go brighter actually. Now that I've changed the colors on these, I'm gonna go brighter on the 6.4. Uh, Cause these are major uh, items 
and you guys can play around with this um, all you want. Do not turn off labels because you will not see your wave count because that's where the wave counts are at is on the labels. Um, save as default, click OK. And now your chart is not as uh, busy, if that makes sense. And then even if we turn on bits that's on there, and even if we turn on roller coaster, uh, a lot, a lot easier on your eyes. And when you have a lot of things going on at the same time, like you have a bits indication to go short right here, cyan cross over the yellow, we're below the purple point of control dots. Uh, we're below the six four moving average right there. Uh, bits gave you a nice signal there. Then uh, you also got your RSI cranked over right here on the candle before, two candles before it crossed over and then it took off down. Uh, your bias dots are green uh, for the long term, uh, but your oscillator, you can tell was going down, going down, going down. And your stochastic crossed over on there too. We might run a few minutes over, guys, if you don't mind, um, and gals. Um, so if you don't, I, I really want to go through all of this so that you have it. Um, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to turn off roller coaster and bits because I'm going to show you. I need to find an Elliott wave that worked, like this one failed. But let's isolate over here 23. 251. And for any of you that needs to know how to isolate, you usually go to the higher low of yesterday. So um, for now, for this demonstration, I'm just going to go right here. Um, I just 23200. Here's your bar count number on the left. You hover over the low point 23200. Click your sprocket. Inputs 23200. It's going to start recalculating from that candle on. And let's see what we had. All right, here's a fifth wave move that worked. Actually, we're on a, a 30 minutes. Let's go down to five. We may have a, this is candle 20,921. I want to go through. 20,921. I want to show you how to set up your fibs um, as defaults. Okay, here's a nice fifth wave move. All right, so, and if you want to hide these numbers that are on here, all you got to do is click that little arrow down. Now you can, um, let me think here. Settings. Nope, it's not on that one. It's underneath your regular settings. You can turn off symbol. Let's turn on appearance. Nope, trading scales. Here we go. one of these in here. I can't remember which one. Um, you can cut these down right here, but the easiest way is you just click that arrow and they disappear off the screen. Um, now you can see I've turned, I've made this um, dark enough that it's actually a little too dark. So I really should go in and make it brighter. But for now, I'm going to leave it where it's at. So we need to draw a channel between the third wave and fourth wave where it paints it. So we're gonna go over here and click the where it says trend line. You're gonna hover down here to regression trend. And same way with it, you can click a little star. So it makes it a favorite. So I click regression trend. Now I'm just gonna draw one on here for now. You just click the top of the three and the bottom of the four. All right, now you can either right click the top line or any of the lines of the channel and click settings or 
this little box right here is for that channel. You can just hit the uh, sprocket. And I like uh, to use close on my settings for a pullback channel. And I'm gonna just put on here, W5T wave pullback channel. All right, I like to have it um, in a different color and I do two and negative two for the deviation that's standard on there and just close. Now on my other channels, I do high, low, close divided by three or open high, low, close divided by four. Um, now, after we set that on there, you'll then click under template, save as, and you can put W5T, what in the world did I just do? Click the wrong one. Save as W5T wave for pullback channel. All right, have it in there. Do you want to replace it? We'll just say yes. Okay, this is now the next time that you want to draw a channel. You click channel. This little box will actually be over here somewhere. You can drag it around wherever you want it. I like putting these up top because they're out of the way. Uh, but when I go to draw a channel, I don't have to go in there and do all those settings. I can just hit drop down. And actually here, let's do this. Let me just, let me erase this. Okay, we're gonna erase this one. All right, so let's say we're gonna do this way forward pullback channel. We click channel, drop down menu, and just hit your way for pullback. And all those defaults are already there. So it's like really, really quick. Just boom, boom. Uh, Edith, as of right now, they do not have a trilling stop. It is in the works um, about 60 days ago. Um, I had a meeting with um, some top guys from TradingView, a webinar, and we went through and I gave them like a nice big list of everything, but that is one of them. Okay, James, thanks so much uh, for attending. Uh, so, all right, so uh, one of the rules is you don't take this trade until it breaks out of this channel going up. It needs to be above the 6.4 moving average. Um, this video here is not on how to use the indicators. This one today or tonight is setting up your charts. Um, as defaults. So basically you're not gonna take this trade until it gets out of here. All right, well now that we've done the wave four pullback, I'm gonna extend this up a little bit so that, let's see. Trying to make, I've shrunk these down in here. Well, there we go. All right, so we need to do a Fibonacci between the third wave and the fourth wave pullback. We need to make sure that this red uh, did not pull back more than 140. So how you do that is you go over here and this little pitchfork, click the little arrow next to it. You go down to Fib Retracement. Now, typically it's gonna have a whole bunch of colors I am going to, let me see here. You basically go from the zero, there's your four. You go to the zero line and then you go up to the wave three high. And let me see, I'm gonna make this bigger. Actually here, if you just click this little uh, box right here next to it, you can make something bigger where it's easier to see. And that wave three high was basically on this hump right here. And you're gonna go, eh, you're gonna go to the left. You're gonna click this one right here. This is barely, barely, I mean, I'm talking it went one little bar off of it and that um that little wick down pro that was darn close to messing up that 
not going to rule it completely out. It didn't like um, totally, you know, be destroyed out of it, but it's really, really close. I don't like taking a fifth wave move unless it crowns. Uh, a lot of times on your two, two, three, four minute charts, you won't even get a crown because it's so fast that it paints it and goes and takes off. But let me show you on this. Uh, you just right click that where you drop that Fibonacci. Right click. And you get the settings box here. I'm going to grab you. Okay, this was. Let me, let me see if you all can see this. Can you guys see this other chart that I just grabbed that I moved around right here? Are you all still alive? Yes, okay, good. Okay, this is what the chart originally, uh, when you first pull up that fib, this is what it's gonna look like. And this is what you need to adjust your settings to. So let me drag these side by side. So you need to uncheck these other boxes. And I have the video I posted at the beginning of this, um, at the beginning of the tonight's webinar, has a link to the video of how to do this, but you're gonna basically undo those. Um, you're gonna save them. You're gonna uncheck the boxes, put them in there, click that download or the, the little button right there for template. And you're gonna click save as, and you can name it W5T90140. Bib, click save. And the next time you go to do it, it will automatically be in there. Same way with your target from here to your fifth wave target, you're gonna draw another Fibonacci. You're gonna to go to the same spot, Fib retracement, and you're gonna save another one as risk to reward. And you're gonna click um, off of, I, if your entry is gonna be off of the six four above the six four moving average. I go from there, and or excuse me, hold on. Let me start this over. Let me click this again. You're gonna go from the very top of that target zone down to your entry, which is zero. So I'm gonna take it. It needs to be above that six four moving average. So this is basically gonna be a one to one if it makes it to the um, target zone, which it ended up going and one point six and it went way up, way above there. Uh, but to adjust that one, you do the same way. Here is the settings for that. And I have, let's see, let me grab the retracement zero, 6.18. There's the 9140. Let me grab this one and shrink that down. Pull this down here. This is what it originally looked like. And then this is what you uncheck and you save it. Save as, and you're gonna save it as risk to reward. Risk to reward. You can put W5T just so you know it's there. Click save. And then the next time that you go to use it, it is gonna be there for you. So, all right, so we've got favorites, fibs, profit. We did the object tree. Ladies and gentlemen, I think, oh, one, um, one other thing, the auto scaling. If you right click, let me see here. I believe so, I think I've seen it in here. Parents, nope, scales, price lock, I believe, there you go. Yep, so just right click the screen, settings, lock price to bar ratio. And then if you take that off, 
then it does that. So see, look, I learned something new on there and I didn't even know what I was doing. Um, also, this magnet over here, it has the ability for weak magnet or strong magnet or completely off. I usually keep mine on weak magnet and let me show you where it comes in handy. Let's say you're drawing, um, all right, 1700 hours. Let's say you're drawing the opening range for um, the Globex session. Now I did it, let's see, 5 p.m. Globex, where are we at? 1700. If you have weak magnet, if you just hover over the top of that um, wick and the bottom, it's going to drop it to the, the top of the wick because it knows you're trying to do it. So let me erase it and let's try it again. So if I hold it to the candle top and the the actual body, it's going to, the weak magnet is going to grab it and drop it exactly on those two spots um, out of there. It's kind of a, a neat little deal. Now, if you do strong, I don't like strong magnet. It uh, becomes kind of a pain in the rear end. And it's like, sometimes it wants to drop, like it, see it dropped it on this candle over here because I was too far over. Uh, it's just a pain in the butt. So, I like running mine on weak magnet, and then you can um, drop them wherever you want. And then you have your range on there. And imagine that, look at where we are bouncing off of. Bouncing off that prior fifth wave target and the opening range bottom. Like very, very, very big resistance on that right now. All right, well, let me think. I think that's it. Um, I can't think of anything else. If you guys have questions, um, uh, Edith, tomorrow, um, the, I'll get a link and I'll post it on Twitter, but usually within 24 hours, it's on the, um, trade the fifth website, uh, on the YouTube channel. They'll post it on there, but just, um, look for it on Twitter. I'll post it on there. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I hope you got, um, Bill, I appreciate it. I hope you got a lot of info tonight. Um, there really wasn't anything going on in the market uh, to jump on to like go over a trade. And I figured this was a pretty good uh, info on how to use this platform. Um, and I could do an entire class on using uh, an iPad. There's like so much stuff you can do on it. But all right, guys, have a good night. Appreciate you all coming in and hanging out with me. Good night.